If you're trying to hem knit fabric and coming out with a wavy mess, this video is for you. Stretchy fabrics need special stitches and settings on a sewing machine. And in this video, I'm going to share all my secrets to perfect hems and top stitching too. Hi, I'm Adrienne from Sew PDF, and I've been sewing for about 25 years. For the last five years, I've been designing and marketing PDF sewing patterns. My goal is to make sewing easy and fun. So before I get started, I'd just like to note that all of this advice applies to both hems and top stitching, even though I talk mainly about hemming. So the first and most important tip for avoiding wavy hems is to not stretch the fabric while you're running it through the machine. You need to hold it lightly, letting the feed dogs feed it through without putting any tension on the fabric at all. Secondly, and almost equally important, is to lower your presser foot pressure because the pressure of the presser foot on the fabric as it runs through underneath can stretch out the fabric even if you aren't putting any tension on it at all. So you want to turn down the presser foot pressure until the hem stops coming out wavy. Some machines don't have this setting and in this case I would highly recommend a walking foot or a knit foot. I have another video where I talk in detail about how to use a walking foot or knit foot and the various settings on your machine. So if you're interested in checking that out, it's linked above or in the description of this video. If your hems are still coming out wavy using these settings, then I would suggest using a wash away tape to stick your hem up because the wash away tape doesn't stretch. So it will allow you to sew through it and not stretch the fabric while you're sewing your hem. Likewise, a fusible hem tape can be ironed onto the hem to prevent it from stretching. However, most fusible hem tapes do not wash away, which means that your hem won't be stretchy anymore. And this may be a problem if it's a narrow sleeve hem or something like that that needs to stretch when you're putting it on. For this reason, I would say the wash away tape is a better bet because it's going to wash away the first time you wash the garment. Finally, what we're gonna focus on most in this video is the different stitch types that you can use for hems on stretchy knit fabrics. So first you've got your standard stretch stitches that are commonly used for seams when sewn on a sewing machine for stretchy knits. And these are the zigzag, the triple stitch, and the lightning bolt. These can all be used for hems and for top stitching as well, but I personally prefer the look of the triple stitch, which looks like a straight stitch unless you're up super close and can see the multiple back and forth stitches of the triple stitch. I use this stitch for most of my simple sleeve hems and top stitching bands, as it's quite stretchy and strong and I think it looks quite good. If you look at store-bought knit clothing though, most of it is hemmed or top stitched with a double line of straight stitch and an interlocking stitch on the back. This is done on industrial machines that are designed specifically for this purpose. To achieve this exact stitch on a domestic machine, you need a machine called a cover stitch, which has just this one function. It doesn't sew seams, it doesn't have any other purpose aside from hemming. Most hobby sewists are not gonna be able to stomach the cost of a cover stitch machine, or even have space for one, when it does just this one purpose. But honestly, they really aren't necessary, and they require a lot of patience and practice when you first start using one. I have a lower end cover stitch machine, and to be honest, I rarely use it because I just don't have the patience. It takes more time to thread it with the correct color than it does to thread my regular sewing machine. And cover stitches in general are prone to skipping stitches if you don't have the settings just right. And those settings tend to vary from fabric to fabric, different thicknesses of fabric, different stretch amounts, but I will note that it seems that the higher you go in price, the more they do seem to self-adjust. I've heard that the higher end machines, such as a baby lock, tend to self-adjust quite easily and don't skip stitches very often at all. Many people do love their cover stitch machines, so I wouldn't discount them entirely. It just kind of depends on your personality and your preferences. I have made some adjustments to my cover stitch machine, which has allowed me to use it a few times without any skip stitches but I find that I prefer knowing 100% that my stitches are not going to skip, which as long as I have a sharp needle with the correct type of needle for my fabric and my machine is running well, doesn't need any maintenance or anything, then I've never had a skip stitch when I'm sewing hems on my sewing machine. And I've actually found several stitches that I really quite enjoy using. So for those reasons, I don't tend to use my cover stitch. If you would like more information on cover stitch machines, let me know in the comments and maybe I can recruit one of my friends who loves to use their cover stitch machines to make a video for you, or maybe spend some time mastering my own machine. An alternative to the cover stitch is a twin needle, which mimics the cover stitch with a double straight stitch line on the top 
and on the back it's more of a zigzag than the interlock pattern that a cover stitch has but it is quite a lot less stretchy than a cover stitch i spent some time a few years ago perfecting my twin needle stitch before ultimately deciding that it was too much work for my personal tastes and I prefer a variety of single needle stitches on my sewing machine and I'll share more about those shortly. So since it's been several years since I actually used a twin needle, I recently went to our SewPDF Facebook group for a refresher, asking the community there for their best tips for using a twin needle. It's a great place to ask for sewing advice. Check out the link in the description below if you're interested in joining us there. So the most important tip for using a twin needle to hem knits is to make sure that you are using a stretch twin needle and not a universal twin needle. As far as the size, there were preferences for both a smaller and a larger size of needle. So I would recommend getting both and testing out the different sizes on your machine to see what you prefer. Another tip is to lengthen your stitch to at least a three length. But again, play around to see what works best for you and your machine. When it comes to tension, some people find that they can just leave it alone on the average tension setting, and some like to adjust the tension up to get a little more stretch in the stitch, or down if they're having issues with something called tunneling, which is when the center part of the fabric gets raised up in between the two lines of straight stitch. And here are a couple of other important tips that I definitely remembered from my days of using a twin needle. First, do not backstitch with a twin needle. They aren't designed for this and you can damage your machine or break a needle doing it. When you finish stitching with the twin needle, cut your threads off long and then pull them all to the back and tie them off. This will prevent your stitches from unraveling when the fabric is stretched. So I've already pulled one set of threads to the back here. I'm just gonna show you how to pull the other end. Excuse my uneven stitching on my sample. So you're just gonna pull on the back thread and it will loosen the stitches and now if you can get a pin underneath and just pull those threads to the back. Then you can tie all of them off and then that way when you stretch it won't pull the ends out of the stitches and then start to unravel. So you gotta make sure to knot those threads at the back. Second, I found it very helpful to use maxi lock stretch thread in my bobbin when I was sewing with a twin needle. This gave the stitches a little more stretch and made them stronger as well. I talk more about maxi lock stretch thread and how to wind your bobbin with it in the video above, just in case you're interested. So let's put all these tips into practice and I'm going to show you how to thread and use a twin needle. This segment was not pre-rehearsed, though I have edited the footage to speed it up, of course. And this was literally the first time that I had used a twin needle in several years and the first time that I'd ever used one on this actual machine. So you can see exactly how I tested out my settings to find what was right for my machine. Step one, install the twin needle. And step two was to install the additional spool pin. Just had to stick it in a little hole here and then thread both needles the same way as you would normally thread one needle, just twice. And I'm putting some stretch thread in the bobbin and using a different color, which will help me see what the stitch is doing just as I'm evaluating my settings. Okay, now I'm going to try this with a longer stitch length. Let's start with three and see how that does. And I'm going to start with my tension on the standard setting, although I may not need to adjust it because my machine has an auto setting, which will actually self adjust the tension. Okay, so I've got some sample fabric here. Let's test out these settings. Oh, looks pretty good already. There's a little bit of tunneling in the middle. It's hard to tell, but it's, it's raised a little bit in the middle. So I could try lowering the tension, taking it off of auto and lowering it a little bit. 
Uh, let's see what that does. So that did make the center a little flatter. However, my stitches seem a little bit looser. So I think if I was going to use a twin needle on a regular basis, I would probably stick with the auto tension on this. Here's what the back looks like. So this is the one with the lower tension. And you can tell from the different thread color that there's actually more of the blue showing on this one, which means that because of the lower tension, um, the bobbin thread here is pulling more of the top thread to the back because it's looser. As for stretch, it's a pretty decent stretch on here. This is the one with the lower tension. And this is the one on auto. That's not bad. I do find that when I'm stretching it, it's actually making that tunneling worse, but that's probably because the ends aren't tied off. So when I'm stretching it, it's actually pulling some of the thread from the ends into the middle and making it looser. So the other thing you can do to help with tunneling is put stabilize the fabric. So what I've done is I've actually put a piece of wash away tape where I was going to stitch and then I stitched and it's perfect. There's no tunneling at all and it won't stretch right now because the tape is in there but once the tape washes away then it will be stretchy again. And I also sewed this sample on some rib knit. There's no wash away tape in this one but because the fabric is thicker, more substantial, there's no tunneling happening in here. And most of your twin needle stitching will be in the round like this. But yeah, that's looking good. So now that you've learned how to use a twin needle from someone who doesn't use a twin needle, I'd like to share with you the stitches that I do actually use for hemming. As I mentioned previously, I do often use the triple stitch for simple hems and top stitching. I also like to use a regular long straight stitch sometimes, mainly on large skirt hems that don't need to stretch at all when putting the dress on. But I will note that when I use the regular long straight stitch, I always use the maxi lock stretch in my bobbin to give it more strength so that if the hem is accidentally stretched, it won't pop a stitch. I also really like to use the decorative honeycomb stitch for hemming and top stitching. I like the look of it and it's also a really stretchy and strong stitch. So one thing to note about the honeycomb stitch is that it can get a bit distorted depending on your settings and also depending on your fabric. These two samples are cotton lycra and the honeycomb stitch does much better on a structured knit like cotton lycra um, but you can see it's a little bit compressed on this one which was sewn with a higher presser foot pressure with the lower presser foot, presser foot pressure it looks much better and then these samples are a really stretchy polyester jersey and no matter what settings I used, the walking foot, the presser foot pressure, no matter what settings I used, it was giving me this. So what I did was I put a piece of wash away tape where I was going to sew to stabilize it. And then I did my stitch and it came out perfectly. So even this one could be improved a little by using the wash away tape. There are actually a lot of decorative stitches on modern machines that are quite stretchy. So I'd encourage you to take some scraps and just try out a bunch of stitches and see if you find one that you really like. Thanks for watching and let me know in the comments if you have any questions. I'm always interested in new video topic ideas, so if you have a question I might make a video about it.